you know what, we, whatever kind of faith you have, you know, when you ask for something from God, you know, that feeling you have that you believe it, you know, and you get excited about it. Well, sometimes a lot of people out there, I might be talking to you, it's hard for you to have that kind of faith. You ask for something, you're like, I don't feel like I'm really going to get it, you know. And that's not God telling you you're not going to get it. You need to exercise your faith. You know, like uh, whatever you have going for you, whatever you think about that you get excited about, see, that's God. That's giving you, that's, that's what you have faith in the most. That's what he wants for you. Think about that, you know. When you think about something, imagine yourself and try to believe that you can have that, see, and have faith, even just that amount of faith and ask God for it. He will give it to you. Now, a lot of times when we ask for something amazing and incredible, we don't get it right away, but we do get it, all right? God, you know that old saying, God is hardly ever on time, but he's never late. That just means he's never on our time, on our time, but he is never late. You ever notice like when God blesses you, uh, gets you through something or uh, gives you something, like right after he gives it to you or almost at the same time it could have went south and got ugly real easy if he wouldn't have given it to you and like man that was that was incredible you know if god wouldn't have blessed me i would have been in bad shape he loves you he's trying to show himself to you he wants you to have faith in him all the time knowing that he's going to come through for you because he is he's never going to let you down what he's never going to leave you nor forsake you. He's trying to say, literally, in the Bible, he's saying, I'm never going to let you down. Have faith. It's all right. You're, I'm not going to let you fall flat on your face. You're going to be, I'm going to come through for you. That's what he wants. He wants you to exercise your faith. He wants you to believe in him. See, uh, whatever spark you have, you know, when you think about something that you get excited about, well, whatever you love, whatever gets you excited, ask God for that. Whatever you can believe in, try your hardest and ask God. Ask God to help you have, to give you incredible faith to believe in all things that are possible and to be able to see it come to pass. To even to be able to say, God, I literally want to say to this mountain, be thou removed and thrown into the sea, the physical mountain. I want it to be done. Bless me like that, Lord. In Jesus' name I ask, Lord. Amen. He will. He will do whatever you ask. Not because he's your servant. Because he's your God. He loves you. He wants to bless you, see? He wants to give you incredible things. Do you know God directs our every step? God is in our thoughts. Of course he is. How could he keep track of you? You know what I mean? How could he even be a good judge of anyone if he didn't know your thoughts? He only knew your actions. Now, remember what Jesus said. He said, uh, if you even lust after a woman in your heart or in your thoughts, basically, you're guilty of, uh, you know, lusting after fornication or whatever, you know, uh, adultery in your heart. You're guilty of adultery in your heart. Now, is that a sin? Yeah, it's a sin. So your thoughts are up for it to be to be sin. He knows your thoughts is what I'm saying. But that's okay. Whatever, you know, don't worry about sin. You know, I talk a lot about, if you follow my Facebook uh, post, it seems like I'm telling you it's very hard to get in heaven. It's not. You know, the only way you can never make it is if you just quit following Christ altogether, even if you believe in him. If you quit following him and live for the world, become wicked, you know, and hurt people all the time, you wouldn't make it. But if you follow Christ, it's not hard. Ask God to bless you to make it to heaven. He will. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He's never going to let you down is what he's saying. See, whatever he wants you to know, whatever you need, I will give it to you because I love you. And he wants you to do things for him too. But don't, get, don't be intimidated about that or don't feel obligated he wants he's going to bless you to be happy about serving him see god wants you to serve him in a way that excites you uh, he wants you to use your talents remember when he gives people talents remember that jesus jesus uh gave the parables right 
of a man that was going to accept the kingdom for himself, and he left for three people, uh, just as a parable, uh, so many talents, or so much uh, money, basically. You know, ten talent. He gave each of them one, actually. And then, remember the one made, he turned it into ten, the one, and then the other one turned it into five, and the other one just kept the one. He was too afraid to, to do anything with it. You know, uh, that's a symbol of uh, people that come to the Lord Jesus, that come to God, and try to serve Him. Now, the one that had ten, the the one that ended up with ten talents, he got, you know, he was excited, you know, uh, or she was excited. But that was one of the seeds that another parable Jesus told that fell on good ground, and it produced some th some thirty, some sixty, some a hundredfold, you know. I don't want to get too deep into parables right now, but Jesus loves you. He he came here. He get, he showed himself. He showed God to everyone. He was healing people in broad daylight, at night too, indoors, outdoors, he, in church. He that was a you know that was against uh, rabbinic laws back then, against Hebrew laws. You weren't supposed to heal or do anything on the Sabbath. Yet Jesus told them. Well, why not? You're, you take your ass or your donkey, whatever, out of the stall on Sabbath when he gets stuck in a hole or a pit, and you put him back. You know that's doing something on Sabbath too. How much more is it important to heal a child of God on the Sabbath day that needs to be healed? Obviously, that's important. Of course, he was, Jesus was trying to say there was one uh, part in Scripture where Jesus said, "My Father works every day. I'm not going to stop working." <laughs> That's what he actually said. Uh, but just know this. God has a, a, he has a plan for your life. He already ordained you to be here. If you're watching this video, he wanted you to see it. He's talking to you. It's not me. Now, that's faith, right? But it's God. God's talking to you. I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing it for him. So he's talking to you. Whatever you receive, a message, inspiration, hope, the Holy Ghost, feel the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. He's talking to you, man. He loves you with all his heart. All you have to do, Jesus made sure that it was easy, is believe. Believe. Now, if you don't have a lot of belief, if it's hard for you to believe something that great could happen, start small. What do you believe? What gets you excited? What ignites your excitement? What gets you going? What's your spark of your faith, you know? Is it music, art? Is it teaching? Is it uh, being a leader? You know what I mean? Who knows what it is? I don't know. You know. But that's one of your talents God gave you. Uh, use that. Ask God to bless you in that realm that gets you excited. Whatever it may be. Whatever it is, he wants to bless your whole life. He's not going to let you down. Remember that. He's going to come through for you. Now, like I said, uh, in my experience, and everyone I've ever talked to, God usually, sometimes he blesses you right away, you know, because he, your plan is different. His plan for your life is different than his plan for my life. In my experience, in my life, he does bless me right away sometimes. But other times he waits because he, he's shaping and molding me. But I just want to get you started on something or he does. God wants you to have faith. Ask God for something big, for something important. You know, for something that gets you excited, get excited. God wants you to be blessed, man. Can you imagine walking around, laying hands on people, and they're healed? God heals them right through you. It's not you. Even Jesus said, remember that? He said, it's not me that do the works. It's the Father in me that doeth the works, that performs these miracles. It's not me. See, it's God. Even Jesus, the Son of God, he wanted God to do it right through him. He didn't want to do it on his own. He wanted. He did it for his father, for God. We're gonna do this. We got to do the same thing. But it's incredible. But when you serve God, when you get to know who God is by reading His Word, or if you don't read the Word a lot, that's all right. Try to. But if you don't, if you haven't, that's okay. Talk to God. Get to know Him because He wants you to get to know Him. God has set a road before you. Where you've already been is behind you. Can I give you some advice? God is telling you, do not look back. 
Don't focus on the past, only the future, only the present time. Always look ahead. Don't focus on the past. That's where the devil works. When you start turning around, looking behind you, the devil's going to try to get you upset, get you mad, thinking about past events, thinking about how you've messed up, thinking about your failures, your faults, your shortcomings. You know what I mean? What you're bad at. See, don't ever look back. Always look forward. What did the Apostle Paul say? Run the good race. Try to run the good race. What was he talking about? I was like, what is he talking about? He's talking about faith. You know, keeping your eyes on the Lord Jesus, on God. You know, uh, in other words, not looking away from Christ to get distracted by the world and letting God down. You know, he wanted to keep looking at Christ and following him and get stronger and stronger, you know, more and more. And he wanted miracles to happen. And they did. It's amazing what you can do, uh, what God can do through you. That's a better way of putting it. When you follow him. Remember Peter, when he got out of the boat, he saw Jesus walking on water and he was scared. They're all scared. They thought he was a ghost, a spirit. And Jesus said, don't be afraid. It is I, you know, and Peter said in uh, something like, what do you, you know, he's walking on water. Jesus is walking on water. And Peter said, can I come? You know, can I walk on water? And Jesus said, come, come, you know. And Peter got out of the boat. He was walking on water. Can you imagine how happy he was? <laughs> and he was walking on water. What happened with Peter? You can imagine he was looking at Jesus, you know, walking on water. Man, I was looking right at you. You know, whatever. He gets, he's excited. And he gets uh, scared because the waves are rough, you know. It was the seas were rough. And he got a little scared. And he started, he started to fall in. And Jesus grabbed him. He didn't let him fall in. See, that's like a symbol for your life. If you keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus, right? If you keep your eyes on him, he's not going to let you He's not going to let you fail. He's not going to let you fall. And you'll be symbolically, maybe even for real, depending on how much faith you had, walking on water in your life, walking over all this stuff that you're afraid of like it's nothing. Basically a miracle in itself. It's like I I like to think I like to say it like this. Imagine you doing it all yourself, talking your way through life, working your way through life, or you could be talking to God the whole time, holding your head up in the air, looking up, following him, and you would get there faster, you know? He would do it for you in that respect, right through you. Keep your eyes on him. God has a plan for your life. You know, he wants you to get excited. You know, the devil, he tries to beat us down one thought at a time. You know, he really does. God will never do that. He, ne he will never beat you down. A lot of, and I know you might be thinking, well, he corrects me sometimes. He punishes me. No, 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 no. The devil, God will chastise you. That means he will, excuse me, he will correct you. God will correct you. But he never punishes his own children that bad at all, ever. The devil will hurt you. And tell you in your ears, God punishing you, man. He's doing it. You know what I mean? To try to turn you against your own God. Isn't that something? Don't fall for it. The devil likes to hurt you. By the way, don't believe that you deserve punishment. If you're starting to feel like you deserve punishment or you feel guilty about anything, ask God to forgive you in Jesus' name. He will. Instantly. And don't look back. What did Jesus say? Ask for forgiveness. And be forgiven. Move on. Don't look back anymore. Don't let other people remind you of your sin. See, you remind them of Jesus who saved you from it, who forgave you for it, for all of it, and sets you free from it. Jesus said, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. You're free forever. Not just in this life, for all of eternity. So do not worry. You know, if you focus on God with all your heart, with all your strength that you could. Even when you got tired and fell asleep and started over again when you woke up. You would never worry that much at all. You'd probably never worry at all. You know, but look, I want to, I just want to say, I want to challenge that. God wants to challenge you. Ask for something special. Ask God to get you excited. You know, we have not because we ask not. Whatever you don't have, you haven't asked God for yet. 
And if you have asked God for it and you don't have it, get on your knees. Get excited. Start praying to God. Ask Him for it. Push. Pray until something happens. God wants you to, maybe He wanted you to get close to Him and bless you that way to, let, to remind you that He's always with you. He wants to make you happy. Don't let doubt, don't let the devil and all these ideas, don't, look, don't let looking at the past bring you down. Let God bring you forward. God is a miracle worker. You know, he sent his son here to die for you so you don't have to suffer ever again in this life or the next. Well, we do have to suffer some in this life, but not from him. Now, he can bless you. God blesses all of us children. I'm just saying, sometimes, remember what Jesus said, we suffer persecution uh, from people, but never from him. He loves you with all his heart, but you are rewarded greatly in heaven for it, more than you can ever imagine. You know what I mean? Look at look at Paul. He was hit with 39 lashes. They call it scourged in the Bible. He was scourged five different times. And he celebrated. He said, I brag about my infirmities, my his physical ailments or whatever. He brags about it because he's going to be rewarded for it in heaven for, uh, for suffering for Christ, for God. Look, anyway, I just want to, I don't want to get off topic, but have faith, man. Don't worry, you don't need big faith. What did Jesus say? A size of a mustard seed. Very small. You don't need much faith at all. Just a tiny, if you have enough faith to ask, God will bless you. Look, I love you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Whatever you ask for, ask for it in Jesus' name. I promise you, God will never let you down. Never leave you nor forsake you. Amen.